I had sushi last night actually here in New York, but the fisheries are closed uh, that are the most affected and the types of fish off Japan. So there are checks on that. Certainly they've increased the checks like the FDA in this country, but still there can be holes. So I think we really have to uh, hope and ask the questions of the people who are monitoring <coughs> fisheries in Japan and making sure that fishermen aren't coming into the areas that are closed, that there's a regular monitoring both you know, here and abroad. And the other point that uh, someone asked me later to be careful with is they have the most strict standard, 100 becquerels per kilogram. It's 10 times lower than other countries like the U.S. and Canada. So what they're doing to close the fisheries is 10 times sooner than, say, we would close the same fisheries for the same exposure. It's partly because they eat a lot more fish than we do, so there's good reason to have a more strict standard in that population. It's partly because they wanted to convince the public that it was safe to be eating Japanese foods. Convince. And that kind of backfired because the fish didn't go down as fast as they expected. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Starr, dozens of articles falsify the ICRP's radiation risk model or show it to be an error. Hundreds of references in Russian language literature show extraordinary effects from radioactivity on genomic instability, genetic effects in plants and fish, which cannot suffer from radiophobia. Why has this enormous, why has this enormous body of evidence been ignored by the ICRP, IAEA, and WHO? There's an interesting movie called, a video called Nuclear Controversies that I think is uh, worthwhile to watch. <clears throat> and it, in part of the interactions that take place there, they have a former director of the World Health Organization speaking uh, about how the who is subordinate to the International Atomic Energy Agency at the United Nations, the IAEA reports the Security Council, and they don't. Um, also, there's a contractual relationship between the World Health Organization and the IAEA, so they, who has to have their reports essentially uh, okayed by the IAEA. And uh, in the movie, I spoke of the, the Dr. Vesely uh, Nesterenko, and I believe uh, one of the esteemed guests that's here is uh, uh, Alexei Yablokov was in the conversation. And they um, were talking, they were asking why, although it was Michael Furneaux, I believe, but he was asking why is the World Health Organization not accepting the reports nine years of the research from the scientists and doctors of uh, Belarus about the you know, 100,000 measured whole body counts and 300,000 foodstuffs that have been measured. And uh, what he said was, that, well, we can't accept that information unless it comes from the government. If you go to the website of Belarus, it's interesting, there really is very little or almost no mention of Chernobyl, except maybe on a sub-page, although when you look at the health statistics like the ones I had on today, you'll see a precipitous drop in the, you know, uh, Life, it's like a 19 year drop in life expectancy from 1986 to around 2000. It's, since then, it seems to be bumping up, but I, I'm not sure I, I'm not sure I believe any government statistics anymore from anybody. <laughs> I get like too cynical. But, um, you know, so I guess my long answer is just that I think, in terms of um, the World Health Organization and IEA, there's a problem there, and uh, in terms of who being subordinate to the IEA, and, and then they also cannot accept the data that I was talking about unless it comes from the government. The government doesn't seem, the same government that puts Yuri Banachevsky in prison for six years and tortures him is probably not going to pass his information on to the World Health Organization. And on that note, um, Tim.